Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Now, of course, everybody is in Man of Steel mode as Superman actually comes out next Friday. So everyone's very excited about that. But another movie that's going to start dominating the conversation again next week is The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Because rumor is that a new trailer will, will debut. Uh, maybe to play in front of Man and Steel, or perhaps uh, in the, for this is the end, or maybe just because a new trailer is due. But what is the hint? What are the, why, do, why do people believe a new trailer is coming out? Well, the rumors are is that, first of all, a friend of mine from Emergency Awesome, if you ever want to check out his channel, Charlie Schneider, he said that new trailers tend to come out every two months, so we're due. The other thing is, is that Liam, uh, Liam Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's brother who plays Gale in the movie, just started a Twitter account. Hmm, perhaps to promote his new trailer? So it's funny to try and figure out how this stuff is, is coming along. So I'll be curious to see what kind of new action that we see in this trailer because everybody's very curious to see what this new director, Francis Lawrence, is going to bring to the films. Everybody's very unhappy with Gary Ross's work. Uh, and also, I'd be interested to see more about Katniss. I've been thinking a lot about Katniss. Uh, I, I find that, you know, I talked about this with the first trailer review, that she, you know, I'm deciding if, she, if she's like a Gandhi figure almost. You know, she's very passive for an action hero. She's almost uh, more of a symbol that's co-opted by others, which I believe is the whole point of the story. But it's interesting because she has the bow and arrow, so I think your, you know, your natural, inclin uh, natural inclination is to think of her as an action hero. But when you think about it, Katniss really isn't an action hero. So I'd be curious what you guys think. Uh, is, she an is she an action hero or is she an inaction hero? And is, in some ways, is that more impressive? Because, you know, like when she stands up to that guy in the first trailer uh, and she's like, don't stop whipping uh, Gail. And she's like, I'm just going to stand here instead of, you know, trying to do, like, like Ripley or Lara Croft wouldn't do that. They'd beat the crap out of that person uh, or try and make a getaway. But, you know, Katniss makes a stand very Gandhi, like very, uh, you know, you're going to have to hurt me in front of everybody and make a social statement. So I kind of find that fascinating. And, you know, the whole question of whether or not, you know, that's a good choice for a female hero. I mean, I, I think that makes her popular with female viewers in some ways. I'm not sure. But uh, the, the, the feminist in me kind of uh, is like, why does the female action hero have to be a pacifist? I don't know. But I didn't read the book, so I'm not as emotionally involved in Katniss as other people. So it'll be interesting to see what, what, what's in this new trailer. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Speaking of uh, young ingenues in Hollywood, uh, Kristen Stewart is currently losing the race to Jennifer Lawrence. They are, you know, Hunger Games versus Twilight. I know a lot of people don't like to see them compared, but there are similarities, and Hunger Games kind of took over from Twilight as the next big, you know, tween sensation or family sensation for these kind of movies. But Kristen Stewart, I think, uh, it was just announced she signed on for two small independent films, which is smart. I think she should take a page from Emma Watson. Emma Watson's done a wonderful job post Harry Potter with uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower and now The Bling Ring, choosing really great projects that kind of expand her repertoire and I think really build her, street, her credibility as an actress. So what's Kristen Stewart going to do? Uh, well, on the side note, I would say that Snow White and the Huntsman was on paper a good idea for Kristen Stewart. And I thought that she looked really good in the role, but she was just such a horrible actress in the movie that I think it really actually ended up hurting her because next to Charlize Theron and even Chris Hemsworth, uh, it was just bad. That speech she gave at the end to try and inspire her troops was just so absolutely horribly wooden and awful. I apologize to any Kristen Stewart fans out there, but I think it would be hard-pressed for anyone to defend that performance. But anyway, although I will say also, Kristen Stewart is one of the best red carpet interviews in the business. Uh, she is always game to answer any questions. She talks, stops and talks to every reporter. She has a really great attitude, uh, and so I find that's very commendable. So I will never, I will always... I will always kind of back up Kristen Stewart because of that, because I find her so impressive on the carpet. And I often wish that she was as eloquent and well put together on her films as she is talking to the press. So anyway, these two movies. The first is something called Camp X-Ray, where she plays a soldier who befriends uh, a prisoner like in a Guantanamo Bay type of place. Or perhaps it will actually be Guantanamo Bay. That sounds like an interesting choice to me. Uh, and, and I like that for her. The other one, though, is something called, uh, it's like some crazy name, like some artistic name. Hold on, I'm going to check my notes. It's something called, like, Sils Maria. And it's a, a film about uh, Hollywood actresses uh, dealing with age, you know, like, oh, apparently the older you get, the harder it is to get work, which is funny because there was actually just an article in one of the trades the other day about the revenge of the 40-year-old actress. So things aren't so bad for those actresses, actually. Uh, so I think that's, that's interesting. But uh, she's going to play the assistant uh, to Juliette Binoche. 
who is an aging actress who's agreed to star in a movie adaptation of a play she was famous for, but because she's older, she has to play the older role opposite a new younger actress playing the role that she originated will be played by Chloe Moretz. And uh, apparently Chloe Moretz is like, character is like a real jerk and really rubs it in her face. I have to tell you, I thought this was a much better, I don't, uh, I haven't seen this movie, but it would be hard to beat Being Julia, the uh, Annette Bening film, which was a period piece, but pretty much tackled the exact same situation. And that's a brilliant film. I think it's called Being Julia. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Uh, but if you go and you look it up, Annette Bening, uh, something with the word Julia, and I think also um, uh, uh, off the top of my head, but the actress Lucy something from, she was on television and she's also on uh, Dinner with Schmucks. She's also very funny. Uh, but that's a great movie. I you, I highly recommend that anybody check that out. And it would be, I think this sounds like a more updated modern version, but you know, Annette Bening. Sorry, Juliette Binoche. I'm sure you're wonderful, but I don't know if you have the fire of Annette Bening. So those are the first two stories for the day. The third story is kind of like an interesting side note and in that someone was talking to Joss Whedon and they were like, hey, do you think you'll ever make the Avengers 2 without Robert Downey Jr.? Because this contract still isn't signed. And Joss Whedon basically said, look, I can't imagine making that movie without him. I kind of don't want to make it without him. And, but, I don't, but I don't see that happening. Which I feel like the, the, the way it was covered was like, oh, maybe Joss Whedon won't make Avengers 2. But I find uh, that is, that's impossible. I think that Joss Whedon probably cannot drop out contractually. But why would he do that? Why would he throw his career away for that? Because Robert Downey Jr. wants to throw his career away. I think it would be a huge mistake for Robert Downey Jr. not to re-up. But I think it depends with Disney if Disney's willing to play ball salary-wise. But anyway, uh, so I thought that was funny. It was, I, I think Joss Whedon's just trying to make it a non-story because uh, he doesn't want to deal with it because he feels it's so unlikely. But, you know, Avengers 2 is getting made. And Joss Whedon is, I think, contractually, because he has this contract. He's going to make it. Robert Downey Jr., I think it would be a huge mistake for him not to be in it, but we'll see. Also, the other funny thing was is that Joss Whedon was like, oh, and I also want to make a ballet. And I, I don't know. I can't, I can't decide if that's like, like, focus, Joss. Like, focus on your, on your Marvel Universe, Joss Whedon. That's the job you have. Or if it's kind of like one of those endearing, eccentric millionaires that Joss Whedon just has so much money and his career is so set now that he can kind of just go and do what he wants on the side. So, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on how good Much Ado About Nothing is. Uh, I really am not a fan of Shakespeare, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit through it. I'm sorry. I mean, I know that Shakespeare is supposed to be beloved by all, but that's really a tough sell for me. Uh, so, so anyway, and I also that much ado about nothing. Some people have you, some of you have asked me about it, and I have to say it looks like it was just shot in someone's house, which it was. Uh, it was, sh was shot in like Joss Whedon's friend's house or something. Uh, and you know, I don't know. I guess coming from film school and stuff, and you know, studying the industry so much, I kind of like you. Come on, you can do a little better. I mean, Joss Whedon can personally fund a bigger movie. So, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it, it's. Much Ado About Nothing so far is coming across to me like one of those industry reels that someone makes to try and get gigs that's very clever and insidery but and is never meant to see be seen by the public. So it'll be interesting to see how the public accepts kind of doing something like that for them. Uh, the other I want so one viewer question today, because we're you know, it's kind of a lot of stuff I've already covered, and the much ado about nothing was kind of a viewer answer. But the viewer question, somebody asked me, what do I think of the current state of uh, black characters and black cinema in Hollywood? Uh, this is like such a delicate conversation. As everybody knows, I am a huge advocate of diversity of race and gender in films. I, I really feel that Fast and Furious is setting a, a trend here, and, and justly so, of uh, representing the audience. I, I find it very frustrating. And Joss Whedon also was talking about this as well in his interview about uh, female characters not being represented uh, represented in action movies and how you know. But I mean, who is represented really in action movies except for white guys at this point? Um, how do I feel about it? I, this is how I feel about the hierarchy of who's doing well in Hollywood. I feel it goes white men, black men, white women, black women, and then everybody else is just trying to get, trying to just get in there. Uh, that's how I feel the hierarchy is. I feel uh, Viola Davis made a really great comment when she was up for the Oscar for the help about how, you know, Maddie McDaniel won the, like, won the first Oscar for a black woman for being a maid, and here Viola Davis decades later was still playing a maid. I think that's really true. I think black women can really only play like maids or like that the person who works for the government is like a, a supervisor. That's like all the roles that she and Angela Bassett are like splitting them up. So it's good to see her coming in the upcoming Prisoners film. So, you know, so I think that black men are doing really well thanks to people like Will Smith, uh, single, almost single-handedly. Idris Elba's trying to come up there, but I think only Will Smith really right now can carry a movie. Uh, and also, not when he comes up with it himself, 
But you know, it's it's really delicate. I, I still think it, it's a it's a problem, um, and it's making a lot of progress. But I do feel that black male actors are better off than female actors of any color. So it's an interesting situation. Write down your thoughts, what you think. I'm hoping you know Jamie Fox. I, actually, you know that that's right, Jamie Fox. I think the Jamie Foxx is still not quite a box office draw on his own, but I'm really impressed with the work he's doing. Jamie Foxx is, uh, you know, of course, Django Unchained. He's the new Electro. And really excitingly, he might be the Daddy Warbucks character in Annie. Uh, they're going to change it to, like, a singer who adopts Annie. And I think that's just fantastic. And uh, Jamie Foxx is getting such brilliant roles. He's really in a great... He's like, he's like the Meryl Streep right now. You know, if Meryl Streep is the white older woman actor Meryl Streep, and I think Jamie Foxx is doing that for black male actors. He's just getting great outside the box, fantastic roles. So that's today's uh, morning movie news. I hope you enjoyed it. Write down what you'd like to see covered on Monday and any questions you'd like answered. Thanks for watching. Bye.